I think, therefore I am. The famous statement came from the fierce rationalist René Descartes. Descartes deciphered philosophical attributes in which he believed that the root of erroneous conditions was the misuse of man's thinking, which is why epistemology was necessary. So, who was this man in the 17th century and what made him so special? Two, one, zero, all I shall bring to light the true riches of our souls, opening up to each of us the means whereby we can find. In other words, mathematicians prepare abstract reasoning that's ready to be used if you will only have a set of axioms about the real world. If I think therefore I am, what about other people? Do they think therefore they am? How can I tell if they're thinking therefore they am? Or am I just thinking they think therefore they am? But actually they're not real and I'm only thinking they am. Are you thinking therefore you am right now? René puts all of what he knows into doubt so that he would have a rationalistic foundation in proving systems. This very philosophical attitude did not only question existing theoretical processes in his time, but he managed to incorporate them in mathematical field and sciences, which gave birth to discoveries like the Cartesian plane, developments of calculus and algebra, and eventually led an impact in modern physics, which are the structure of advancements in technology up to date. These branches are crucial for developing technologies of even the most basic up to the complex machineries and also give in-depth understanding of the world. In Newburgh, an der Donau, a German town, Descartes was sound asleep in a cozy apartment on November 10, 1619. There he produced visions that greatly altered the methods scientists work. He claimed a spirit sent by God endowed him with diverse perceptives about the scientific method, analytical geometry, and philosophy. And in 1637, he presented his theories in the works of his two most remarkable contributions, Discourse de la Méthode, Discussion of the Method, La Geometrie, Geometry, and more, contributions like Les Meteores, Meteorology, and La Dipotique, Optics. The Method Descartes outlined his approach to studying science under discussion of the method. One of his principal ways was skepticism. Everything should be questioned until proven. His four core concepts toward scientific advancement are 1. Never assume anything until enough grounds for uncertainty are addressed. 2. Break down problems as many components as needed to supply sufficient solutions. Three. Organize the thoughts from the simplest to more complex knowledge. 4. Ensure none is omitted by creating detailed and comprehensive enumerations. His insistence on skepticism within the scientific method led scientists to be objective when performing scientific research and inquiry, enforcing rationality through a series of methods and deductive reasonings. Analytical Geometry Descartes developed the revolutionary discovery of solving geometric problems by transforming them into algebraic problems. He described how curves might be expressed as the values of x and y on a two-dimensional plane, thus as algebraic equations in la geometrie, which allowed scientists and the mathematicians to reformulate problems in geometry as equivalent problems in algebra and vice versa. And the subject these formulas to problems in the real world that stemmed since the Renaissance through the needs of astronomy, optics, navigation, warfare, and commerce. In his honor, the Cartesian coordinate system is named after him. His Latin name is Cartesius. Descartes also invented the modern notation for exponents. For instance, he writes a cubed or a raised to three instead of a times a times a influencing Isaac Newton and the invention of calculus. Descartes exhibited his ability to identify tangents to curves in la geometrie, a process crucial in differential calculus. Philosophy One of history's brightest philosophers is considered to be Descartes. He opined that scientists should dismiss old beliefs and theories, noting his most famous declaration, I think, therefore I am. This could also be expressed as, I can think, therefore I exist. 
Descartes believed his statement served as the solid foundation of which other philosophical theories may owe. He utilized logic and mathematics and regarded human reasoning as the most effective road to understanding. One of the biggest controversies surrounding Descartes was his philosophy of mind-body dualism, which posited that the mind and body were two separate entities. This idea went against prevailing views at the time, which held that the mind and the body were intimately connected. Some critics even accused him of being an atheist, which was a serious charge in 17th century Europe. Descartes also faced challenges when it came to his scientific work. He was often criticized by other scientists for not providing enough empirical evidence to back up his theories. For example, his theories of vortices, which attempted to explain the movement of celestial bodies, was widely criticized and eventually disproven by later scientists. Despite these controversies and challenges, Descartes' ideas had a lasting impact on philosophy and science. His focus on rationalism and the power of the mind helped pave the way for the Enlightenment and his contributions to mathematics and physics are still studied and celebrated today. I think therefore I am challenged the conventional wisdom about knowledge and existence, leading to the development of new philosophical schools of thought like rationalism and empiricism. His focus on reason and logic also influenced political thinking, contributing to the rise of liberalism and the growth of contemporary democracies. His concept of dualism has also been applied to the medical industry, leading to new treatments for brain injuries and disorders like Alzheimer's disease and stroke. Overall, Descartes' contributions have had significant impacts on society and have continued to have practical applications in various fields today.